Hey everybody, so good to see you. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel back in time and relive or actually be present to the events recorded in the gospel and other parts of the scripture? Well, if so, stick around. In this video, we're going to learn how to time travel in the Gospels. So welcome back. I hope you guys had a great Christmas and New Year's holiday. Let's dive right into this subject, time travel with the Gospel. First, did you know that God created light before he created the sun and the moon and the stars? In Genesis 1-3, God says, let there be light. And then it's not till Genesis 1 verse 14 where he goes on to create the sun and the moon and the stars to divide the light into the day. That always puzzled me. God created light before he created light the sources of light that we know on earth. So, light is made up of these tiny, tiny particles that we call photons. In fact, photons are some of the smallest particles in existence. Did you know that light travels faster or at the speed of light? In other words, these tiny little particles are traveling at such speeds that we can't really even measure the speed. Now this means that these photons exist outside of time. In essence, time does not exist for light particles or these photons. They're sort of a a God particle. Now, if you remember in 1 John 1, 5, it says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Now, here's where it starts to get a little exciting and confusing. So, just hang with me, and we're going to get to the time travel part. But before, we have to understand the reality of light. Theoretical physicists have defined a bizarre occurrence that happens with light called quantum entanglement. Now, quantum entanglement proves that photon particles communicate with each other from vast distances apart. I mean, we're talking photons in one universe can actually communicate to photons in another universe or galaxy within the speed of light instantaneously they seem to be communicating with one another even though they're galaxies apart from each other. Boom! What? This indicates that these light photons are somehow not only communicating with each other but they are intersecting in this dimension and they're connected simultaneously in another dimension. What? In other words, light is a multi-dimensional substance or particle. In other words, it can exist in our dimension or our earthly dimension at the same time existing in an entirely different dimension or realm, or kingdom, if you will. Now, this explains two things for us as believers in Christ and God. Number one, that the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, is not, a, not only a standalone dimension, it also is able to intersect and interact with the kingdom of the earth simultaneously. It's like we've discussed in other videos. I've talked about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven being sort of like a weather map. Uh, if you look at a weather map, you can, you can see the different layers. You, you, can, you can pull up maps that have side, satellite imagery, maps that have the dew point, maps that have humidity levels, maps that show clouds and or pre precipitation. 
and you have all these different maps that overlay one another, yet they're all happening simultaneously. So that's sort of what we're talking about. We're talking about light in multi-dimensions intersecting and overlapping one another and interacting with one another. And that's what the kingdom of God does, the kingdom of heaven does with the kingdom of earth. Colossians 1.13 says, He has rescued us from a kingdom in darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, the Lamb of God. Now, it's interesting that in Revelation 21.23, it says that the eternal city had no need for the sun or the moon or the stars to give it light. Why? Because it says, for the Lamb was its light, the Son of God. Now, what does this mean for us? That the Lamb was the light of God. So the second implication that light is a multi-dimensional particle or substance is that God and his kingdom are not bound by the confines of space and time. Now, for those of us that are seated with Christ in heavenly places, this is, uh, this is a game changer. That means we are included in the extra dimensional reality because we are in him, we are enfolded into him and sit with him in those heavenly places that we are not bound by space and time either. So we've determined that light or God is not bound by space or time. In fact, he created them both. So let's look at time like this. This is the house of time, okay? And God created this. So we have the past, we have the present, and we have the future. God is outside of the house of time that he created. So he can enter into any of these doors, future, present, or past, at any time that he wishes, because he is not bound by the confines of his own creation. Now, when we were transferred in the, into the kingdom of light, or the kingdom of the sun that he loves, the Lamb of God who is the light of the eternal city, we were also given this trans-dimensional, trans-time and space quality because we are enfolded into him. We are a part of him. We are in Christ and Christ is in God and he is in us. You know, the whole John 17, I am in him and he is in me and we are in him and he is in us and, and all that. We're all in each other. The point is, is that God is outside of time and space and when we are in the spirit, we too are not bound by the confines of creation in this dimensional reality. So we have access not only into the future and our present reality, but we also have access to the past. You know, as spirit beings, we've been given an incredible gift to transcend our physical reality. It's called being in the spirit. Now, if we want to time travel in the gospel, we need to use the Word of God. And I, I just want to caution all my listeners that when we begin to engage with God in these mystical activities, in these, in these supernatural journeys, if you will, uh, traveling in the Spirit, transporting, uh, mystical prayer, all these things, that we need to be grounded in the Word of God. This is our starting place and our safe place. This is the scripture creates boundaries for us so that we don't go off into the darkened areas of our mind and interpret that as God. So we always need to be founded in the scriptures and in the traditions of the church to make sure that we are we're in an okay place. And really, the scriptures were created for us as a framework to, to experience God in his multi-dimensional reality. Yes, we experience God in the physical plane and in the, in the earth and our daily struggles and the troubles that come against us. But he's also calling us to come up to where he is and participate 
in the heavenly realm to govern and co-create with him. We've talked about that in other videos. Today we want to specifically mention or, or, or address the, the act of traveling back in time to participate in the events that occurred in the New Testament or in the Gospels. And we've been given this technology through our imaginations and through the scripture as a framework to insert ourselves into those holy scenes. I've talked in depth about this through the use of theophanies. If you haven't seen my videos or, or checked out my teach sheets on theophanies, you need to go do that too. Uh, where we use the scripture to insert ourselves into a biblical scene and then begin to transfigure in a way uh, through the spirit into those places and begin to participate in those scenes. So what we want to do is we want to take uh, a scene in the gospel. So one of my favorite scenes in the gospel is when it's, it's after you know, the death of Christ, and the, and the guys have decided with Peter, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go fishing, you know, this this whole thing. I'm, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm just going to go back to what I'm used to. And then they see the this guy on the beach saying, hey, you caught anything? And then, uh, you know, Peter realizes it's the Lord, and he throws off his clothes, and he dives into the ocean and, 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 and goes to meet with Peter. With, with Christ on, on the beach and, and breakfast. And so what I like, and have breakfast. So what I like to do is I like to insert myself and imagine that either I was Peter, okay? So I replace Peter's name with Mark's name. And I, I know Peter is somebody we can all identify with. Or one of the other disciples, or maybe even a bystander. Someone who's sort of observing the scene, you know, just outside the circle. Either way. We have the freedom and ability through these word pictures called scripture to insert ourselves into those scenes and actually travel back into those scenes and participate in those scenes as they unfold in the gospel. And so I encourage you, take one of your favorite passages in the Bible and in prayer, get yourself in the spirit and just mentally, through the technology of your imagination, go into one of those scenes. Now first, the first step is that you have to know the scene. And that can sometimes take reading, reciting, just knowing the passage front and back so that you don't have to stop and read as you go. You can take that scene as you've ingrained it into your mind, into your memory, and then you can sort of ascend into it through the Spirit. So the first step with time traveling in the gospel is that you've got to know the Word. You have to take one of the, you, you select your scene that you want to go to, and then you need to uh, fully ingrain that scene into your mind so that it almost becomes first nature, almost like, like a memory. And what's interesting is, is that it is actually part of your genetic memory. Now, think about wine. If you've ever, if you know anything about wine, wine carries the smells, the flavors, the textures of the place where the wine was made, where it was grown. It, it, it absorbs into itself the soil, uh, the air quality, the water it was given, the, the amount of sunlight. It absorbs all these things into the genetic memory of the wine. And so what's interesting, those of us that have been grafted into the vine, who is Christ, we have also been grafted into his genetic memory. When we were born again or regenerated, we became new creations. We received the DNA of God. And so within that DNA is the genetic memory of the Gospels. And we who are in Christ can tap into that. And the way we do that is what I've been explaining before. 
is that we select a scene, we recite the scene, we memorize the scene so that it becomes a part of us so that when we close our eyes and get in the spirit, we can actually transport in time to that scene. Now, I understand that some of you may just think I'm a whack job, but really the reality of time travel in the gospel has been practiced for over 2,000 years in Catholic and Orthodox churches. Every time you enter into a liturgy, uh, you are entering in, you are participating in the divine drama, they call it. So if you, if you have any sort of liturgical background or you're, or you're familiar with the Anglican or, or Catholic or Orthodox way of doing the liturgy and celebrating the Eucharist, you're familiar with this already. Uh, the use of icons and pictures and smells and sights all of this to draw us into the divine drama, to, to, to insert ourselves into the scene as they read the scriptures, uh, especially during the High Holy Day, during the liturgies, and, and there's scenes uh, taking place uh, with crosses and the stations of the cross where, where you journey to each station of the cross to to experience and participate in the passion of the Christ, uh, in the resurrection moments, in, in the reading of the Gospels, we are invited to participate, to remember. And in the, the climax of those time-traveling events in the liturgies of, of the Catholic and Anglican or Orthodox traditions is the Eucharist. It is the point where we enter in and remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, where he said, do this in remembrance of me. Now, what's interesting is that word remembrance there is the Greek word anamnesis. And it doesn't just to it doesn't mean just to remember as a far off event. The word anamnesis actually means to enter into the memory of, or participate in the memory of. So that one word in the Greek there that Jesus chose to use is actually our biblical invitation to travel back in time and participate with him in those events. And those events are not just limited to the Eucharist or evangelicals may call it the Lord's Supper or Communion. We have been invited by Christ not only to participate with him in heavenly places, but to insert ourselves into those gospel scenes, to relive and reconnect with the beautiful sacrifice and the beautiful life that Christ lived on earth. And so, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. More to come in these areas. Uh, if it wasn't too, too clear to you, just... Feel free to listen again, try to wrap your mind around it, but really just go there in faith. We have been invited to go there in faith to participate in this beautiful gospel so that it's not just a history lesson. It's not just some story of antiquity. It's actually our lives. These characters that participate with Christ in the gospel are, it's us. It's us, and, and, and we, can, we can play. We can go back and forth and have a good time in these Gospels. We can go and we can be a, a bystander. We can, we, can, we can participate as one of the disciples or, or Mary who was you know, washing his feet with her tears or, or even the centurion or, or the Roman soldier who pierced his side and, and nailed the nails into into Christ's hands and feet, which is actually what our sin did. So we can, we can go back and, and relive and participate in these beautiful moments so that they can begin to become more and more a part of who we are because they really are. They are a part of who we are. They are a part of our genetic memory in Christ and, and we need to revisit those places. So 
Hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe if you want to, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Oh,